Hey there, you're watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host Kyle Brotherson and today I'm gonna show you how to save yourself a bunch of money, maybe five or six hundred dollars in about 15 or 20 minutes. Stick around. So I know a lot of guys out there that go out and buy a, buy a brand new bike just like this 250XC here, this 2019 250XC, and they immediately go out and they spend about $500 on an aftermarket carburetor. Now, I, I do want to say that a lot of those aftermarket carburetors are fantastic. Things like the Electron and the Smart Carb, those are very, very good products and they work as advertised. They're very amazing. but. They're also expensive, and that's one of the reasons why I don't put them on every bike, and I also want to dispel the myth. There's a lot of people out there that think that these McCuny carburetors that are now coming on the 2017, 2018, and 2019 KTMs are hard to tune. I have found just the opposite. I have tuned five, I've owned and tuned five or six of these carburetors now, and I've had them running as good as any bike ever. You just have to figure out which jets you're gonna put in the bike. The same principles that allowed you to tune your older Kehan style carburetor, those same exact principles apply to the, to the McCuny carburetors. It's not any different and you can get them to run just as good. So what I do is instead of going out there and buying a $500 carburetor on every bike, sometimes I put it on bikes, sometimes I don't, I'll go out and I'll spend 10 or $15 on jets on the jets for the bike. So I've got a jet needle in here, I've got a main jet, and I've got an idle jet over there on the bench that I'm going to swap out in this carburetor. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I've already taken my tank off to make it a little bit easier to get access to this, and then uh, for filming purposes, and it does make it easier. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna swing my carburetor over and do, do the needle out of one side, I'll swing it the other way, and do the main jet and the idle jet from the bottom, it's not hard, let's take a look at how it's done because I can generally, if I'm not filming this, I can generally do it in about 20 minutes tops and that is taking the tank off, doing it, putting it back together. Maybe even, tw maybe 25 minutes by putting the tank on, but, or tank on and off. But if I'm, just, if I'm just moving the carburetor back and forth, I can do it in 15 minutes and I save $500. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen these two uh, hose clamps. There's a one six millimeter hose clamp here and there's one six millimeter hose clamp on the back and that's going to allow me to then spin my carburetor and just pivot it over like this. I'm not doing anything other than that. And then that gives me access to this uh, float bowl down here where I'm gonna get at my, um, my main jet and my idle jet right under this float bowl. Let's take a look at that. Okay, even though I've got the fuel tank off, I know there's gonna be a bunch of fuel in this, in this float bowl right here. So I'm gonna take a couple of paper towels and just kind of jam them in here. And then I'm gonna take my 17 millimeter end wrench and loosen this float bowl. And you'll see the fuel start to leak out of here. Fill up my paper towels. That's all there is to that. Now, this right here is my main jet. And the jet up inside here, which I'll try to get a better shot of, is my idle jet. And I'm gonna take those out and swap them. Super easy. Okay, now you're looking at a straight on shot with the camera down below the bike. I'm gonna take my main jet out with a six millimeter nut driver right here. Simple as that. There's my main jet. Of course, uh, consequently, that is the bottom, bottom of the needle. Um, and here's my main jet taken out right there, and I will replace that with another one. I'm also, I know I'm also going to want to lean out on this bike, at least I think, I'm gonna to wanna to lean out my idle circuit, so I'm gonna take out the idle jet here with just a little flat blade screwdriver. You gotta be careful. All this, all this stuff is aluminum and brass, so you want to be um, very careful that you don't mess anything up. And get that one to drop out, and that's what the idle jet looks like on this particular bike. So now we'll go course, we'll go take a look at our jetting chart and figure out what we're gonna put in here. I already know, but I'll show you. Okay, certainly not all jets are like this. The McCunies weren't, um, but this whole thing, this whole assembly came out and what I, all I need is the end piece. So I'm gonna take and split these two apart, just like that. And this is the actual jet that I'm, go that I'm going to replace. And I, 
know that I'm going to replace that with a 430 uh, jet, and I will show you kind of how I came to that conclusion right now. One of the cool things about a KTM is they give you a jetting chart here, a jetting manual, or a jetting chart here in your manual. They try to change the numbers every year just to make it difficult, I think, but your, your uh, baseline that this bike starts out is in bold. So most of these, most of the stuff on here is just in regular print, and then this one's in bold to show you what's in the bike. So you have the air screw is out two turns, the idle, the idle uh, jet is a 35, uh, here's your needle, here's the needle clip position, and here's the main jet that's in there. And I can confirm that that's exactly what I pulled out of here was a 470 main jet. What I'm gonna put in the bike for where I live and for where I ride is a, 400, a 430 main jet. Um, this is because, and 430 shows up up here in the upper right hand corner, as the, as the elevation goes up and as the temperature goes up, everything gets leaner and leaner. Now I'm going to use some specs that I used on my 2018 bike to get it running well, and that will be my baseline. So I'm gonna use that as my, as my baseline. But you can basically say, well, look, I ride from 5,000 feet to 7,500 feet, and generally it's about 60 to 80 degrees. This is what KTM is suggesting. What I have noticed though over the years that I've been doing this is you can usually go up one and over one, uh, it, you know, because you're going up in elevation and then you're going up in temperature. And then this is generally what I would typically do. So I'm gonna tune my bike more along the lines of this uh, 7,000 to 10,000 foot range and you know 80 degrees to 100 degrees thing and this is usually where I like to run the bikes. Um, just do this at your own risk. Uh, I think KTM makes these, man these jetting charts very conservative to uh, you know CYA cover their own butts but that's just what I do is if I if I live down here I live at 5,000 you know at maybe 4,000 feet uh, and, and I'm generally riding, you know, in this 42 to 60 degree Fahrenheit thing, I'll usually come up one and over one. And this is more how I'm going to jet the bike is, is up there. So take it or leave it on that one. Let's go stick these jets back in the bike. Okay, the one that uh, typically is a little bit more difficult to stick in is the one that I'm going to start with. And that is the idle, the idle jet. So for whatever reason, and I apologize if my head gets in the way, for whatever reason, sometimes it's a little bit trickier to get started on the threads. And you really, really want to be careful that you don't cross thread anything in here. Like I said before, you're dealing with brass and aluminum and your screwdriver is going to be um, steel. So you want to be careful that you don't mess it up kind of like I did there just to <coughs> just a teeny bit I'm gonna get some compressed air and blow that out okay now I will take my fully assembled main jet here I've just screwed the the jet into this housing and I'm gonna start this by hand and again some of the time that jet might uh, come out of there without that housing I've seen it happen both ways on these things. Now we're done on the bottom, so make sure that make sure that your gasket is clean, should be clean um, on the bottom of that float bowl plug. And again, start that threaded by hand, uh, just like this. Use my trusty 17 millimeter again. This doesn't have to be, there probably is a torque spec for this, but it, it doesn't have to be super tight. It's got a gasket on there for a rubber gasket on there for a reason, so don't over tighten. Just snug is all it needs to be. Okay, let's move to the top. On some of the older bikes, I used to be able to tip the carburetor the other way and get it and get at the top of the carburetor on the other side. On these newer bikes, the float bowl hits the uh, hits the engine case down here, so I leave it turned the same way. And it's harder for me to get a good angle to film this, but I'm just gonna come over on this side and pull out the, um, the peculiar seven millimeter bolts that are on the top of these McCuny carburetors. It's about the only place that I know of on the bike that uses, and I don't want to drop that, that uses a seven millimeter bolt. Um, it's just kind of one of those weird ones. 
you don't see that a lot. Okay, now, just sort of running and gunning on this, I'm going to back the camera out here just a little bit so I can show you pulling the top of this, pulling the slide out of the top of the bike. And now, I'm just gonna bring it over here to the side. Is that still in the frame? Yeah, still in the frame. <clears throat> in fact, I might bring this around this way so you guys can see it a little bit better. That's what I'll do. Bring it around like that. Now, this is, give myself some more slack. This is my slide and this is the needle. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this needle off. So the way that this works is I will pinch the spring here. And there's not a real great way to show you how to do this. I just have to have to do it. You pinch the spring and then you, um, there's kind of a little catch down inside here that you take off. This little, the little end of your throttle cable comes off of that little guy down inside of there. So once you get that off, then you're, you're good to go. Don't let that spring go flying. You're gonna need, we're gonna need this later and I'll show you a trick on that later. We're gonna take this now over to the bench and swap out our um, needle. Or maybe I'll just do it, maybe I'll just do it right here for you. That'll be just as easy. Okay, I'm gonna take my six millimeter uh, nut driver and I'm gonna put it down in here and loosen that nut just like this. And that guy comes out. I'm gonna set that aside just down here. I'm gonna use it again in just a second. And now see my needle can come right up out of, the, out of the top of the slide. So as you can see, this needle is, it has a clip on it, right? And I don't know how close I can get to this, um, but this needle is in the second position from the top. So keep in mind, that's the needle clip position right there, okay? So that's gonna be critical. I'm gonna go over and get the needle that I'm gonna put in this bike, and I'm gonna put it in that, in that same position, in the second position, at least I think I am. Let me go double check my, my manual, but I think I'll put it in that second clip position. Look at that, we ended up at bench anyway, because I wanted to show you how I get these clips off. The way I do it without losing it is just by finding the flat, the open part of it, putting it down, and then putting my thumb on the top of this so it doesn't go flying, and then I just push down on the needle. That pops the clip right off the needle and see it's, it's separated now and I didn't use any pliers and I didn't bend my clip or anything. So I'm gonna move that over to the side. I'm just gonna double check that this is the needle I want. 42, yeah, 4275. I'm just gonna follow the manual. Use the leanest needle that it shows in the manual. And now getting this on, I'm just gonna come over here and just do it by hand and I'm gonna put it on the second position again and I get it started and usually I can just push that on with my finger which I just did so now that that clip is all the way down on the second just double check yeah on the second clip position and it's all the way in just like that and now it's ready to go back over and be installed in the slide okay now I've got my needle with my clip installed and I'm going to put it down in my slide just like this so drop that back down in there let that fall all the way down, cool. Then I'm gonna take this little knot and drop it down in here to keep that down like that. And I will take my six millimeter and put that in. Just snug, it doesn't have to be over tight, just snug. Remember we're dealing with some soft alloys here. So that's good to go. <clears throat> now, it's easy to hook this, hook my throttle on right now. Um, but it's not going to be so easy if I try to hook the throttle on after, you know, if I try to stuff this spring up in here and, and do all of that, you know, so I'm gonna, I'd have to grab onto the, the, uh, the throttle wire bunched up in that spring. That's not easy to do. So what I do instead is drop this on the floor. Just kidding, that's not part of it. So I take my little spring off of this guy and I'm going to slide this up the throttle cable, okay? And then I'm going to take and hook my throttle uh, cable onto that little keeper down there, just like this. So now, it might be kind of hard to see, but it's installed down there. And then this guy has a little uh, plastic nub that will then go slip right down on top of that, and it will look just like that down inside there. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's what it looks like. Now, that's all installed, but the spring's not on, right? So 
we're just going to thread the spring on. So this is this is this makes this process a lot easier. If I can get that to start. Now, now I've got it to start and I'm just going to literally thread my spring all the way on to onto this. And it gets more difficult as you go because my fingers have some oil on them and it gets harder and harder to twist as you get closer and closer to having it on. But just keep going and you'll know. There we go. Pops down into place and voila, that's good. Now, I don't know, let me adjust the camera to make sure you can see me putting that back in there. Okay, there may not be a real great cram camera angle for this, but this slide only goes in one way. This has to be, this concave part has to be facing forward. So I'm just gonna carefully, you don't wanna bend any of this stuff, uh, especially your needle. So just go careful and go slow and get, it, get everything lined up perfectly. Don't force anything in. It should fall in there naturally, you know? So that's what you want is for it to just kind of go in naturally down into there just like it did with a little persuasion and then getting this straight. And then at this point, it's just a matter of me putting the bolts back in. Make it hard, sorry, that's probably terrible camera work there. I don't know if I, you can see what's happening. They, these newer bikes with the frames make it a little bit harder to get your hands in here. Now that I've got those started by hand, I'm just gonna get them down by hand, I'm not using that ratchet, just. There's no real good angle on this anymore. So you just kind of move it around, do the best you can to get the right angle that you need, which I think is there. And we're, we're done, I'll just snug those down. Okay, we're all good, so let's put the carburetor back up uh, straight and we'll tighten these hose clamps back down on the carburetor, front and back. And I'll put the tank on and we'll be ready to start it up. Okay, now it's a moment of truth. I'm gonna turn my fuel on, which I already did, choke the bike, See if she'll run. So that's it guys, it's not that hard to do. This takes 15 or 20 minutes. It might take you 25 or 30 minutes. Um, but it's not difficult and you can save yourself $500 by doing that. I just go out there and I buy, look at my jetting chart and then I get some needles, uh, or a needle that's leaner or richer, whatever I need, some, uh, a leaner needle, a leaner main jet, a leaner, le ne a leaner idle jet. They're about $5 a piece. So for like $15, you can do this and you will learn a lot in the process rather than just going out there and buying some jetting kit uh, that you don't get a lot for what you pay for and you won't learn anything. So this bike now is gonna have to go out. I'm gonna have to go out and get it warmed up and ride it around the neighborhood and make sure that the bike is very close. You might have to adjust the, the uh, air screw on the bike on the side here to get it to clean up around idle, to get your idle up to where it needs to be. Uh, you've got an idle screw on there. So you need to kind of play still with some of that with the air screw that will help on the idle circuit and the, and the first you know eighth or quarter throttle, um, it's gonna help with that air screw, just playing around with that. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it guys. So it's not difficult. You could save yourself a lot of money and you're gonna learn about, uh, learn about your bike in the process and learn about, your, learn about yourself and become more confident and this sport is just more and more fun with the more confidence you have to tune these bikes.
until every bike is fuel injected, you're still gonna have to do play around with some jetting on these carburetors and it's not difficult at all. And these McCuny carburetors run just as good as any other carburetor that you've ever had. This is like, I don't even know how many, sixth bike that I've had with the McCuny carburetor on it and I've been able to tune all of them really, really well. That's not to take anything away from Electron or Smart Carb or any of those other uh, carburetors out there, but this Mikuni carburetor is not hard to tune, despite what the internet has told you. <laughs> it's not hard to tune. I'm telling you now, just trust me, it's just like any other, any other carburetor. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you like these videos, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You can support us. If you look down in the video description, I have links to Rocky Mountain ATV. I've got links to Motorsport. I've got links to Amazon. Anytime you click on those links and then purchase, make a purchase, it helps me to support my family, and I would be if forever indebted if you would make a habit of doing that, even just for your holiday shopping for Amazon. I know that we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, shopping on Amazon through the holidays. Please go ahead and use that Amazon link that you'll see down in the description or on my website at dirtbikechannel.com forward slash parts. You can also support me on Patreon if you want to, if you're so inclined, there's patreon.com forward slash dirtbikechannel. You will see uh, my page there and you can make a monthly donation on that should you so choose. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. You guys are awesome and I hope you learned something. We'll catch you in the next video.